Hi, my name is Kay Sutha. I am a business strategist and I will be your host. In this podcast, I'll be getting raw, real and relentless whilst interviewing successful entrepreneurs from all over the world who specialize in different aspects of business. We'll cover the five main pillars of business, which are sales, marketing, finance, operations and leadership. But not forgetting mindset, live and digital events, plus much, much more. You'll gain insights, tips and tricks and discover jaw-dropping actionable steps that you'll be able to put in place for your business right away. Hey everyone, welcome back to Uncensored Society podcast. I have an amazing guest for you today. In fact, today's guest, he took an accidental kitchen table startup with zero investment all the way through to sale and to PLC. He became known as Mr. Online Bingo, and his business won 10 industry awards over its 18-year lifespan. His business also created and hosted their own industry awards ceremony, an industry annual report, and was the first in the sector to advertise on TV. That's right, guys. I said TV. Phil now works as a business sounding board. Think of it as somewhere between being a coach and being a mentor, helping ambitious SME business owners to avoid the stress of being lonely at the top. Phil is a keynote speaker, has chaired industry summits, has appeared in print, online, and on many webinars and live events, as well as countless podcasts and video interviews. Please welcome to the stage, all the way from sunny Leeds, but currently in Spain, Phil Frazier from Business Sounding Board. Oh my goodness, Phil. Thank you for coming down. Hey, what, what a build-up. What a build-up that is. Who is this guy? He sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you loved it. You know what? The thing is, anything less, you know, it, it, it would have worked. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You have done so much. You've helped so many people, achieved and accomplished so many different things. You know, I had to give it my all, right? Anything less wouldn't have worked at all. But thank you so much for coming onto the show and sharing, you know, these golden nuggets about what you've done. But before we get into the nitty gritty, um, first tell us a little bit about yourself, what you did before stepping into building your own business. Okay, so uh, like many people, I did the usual sort of school, sixth form, university, Came out of university with no idea what I wanted to do, um, which is, you know, which is fine. Um, my parents suggested I should be an accountant because that's a that's a good profession. So uh, I got myself a job as a trainee accountant, um, which I managed to last just under a year at. It just it just wasn't me. But I remember when I when I went in to see the managing partner to, to give my notice in, he said, he said, Phil, I think you've made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> really oh my he was a great he's a great vote of confidence um why would he say that I just I I wasn't cut out to be uh, an accountant although having said that it did give me a very good base for when I started running my own business to understand the basics of business yes 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 definitely so having having failed as a trainee accountant um I then fell into selling advertising space so uh, I, like many a person, went down to London to find my fame and fortune, spent six years down there at various companies selling advertising, uh, had a stint as a recruitment consultant as well, um, and then came back up to Leeds again, uh, initially with a job selling advertising, which was with the, the now departed Yellow Pages, right. um, <laughs> yeah. which, which I have to say, and obviously Yellow Pages is now no longer with us, I'm allowed to say this, I hated that job, absolutely hated it with a passion because it was having, having been sort of office based and, and, and sort of selling quite nice products uh, or selling advertising to quite nice products. I was now going out and with all due respect to tradesmen, sort of going out and sitting on upturned milk crates on building sites, trying to sell small black and white ads to builders and things like that. No way. Oh, my God. You did all that. That's why the yellow pages are like that. Thick back yeah, in the day, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I just detested that job. Uh, but I ended up uh, sort of slightly swapping horses and, and ended up at an advertising agency as an account director. Um, 
and absolutely loved that and spent six years at a fun, absolutely fantastic company, learned a huge amount, um, took a lot of the culture from the ad agency to my business. Um, and so, so timeline, this is just coming up to the turn of, of the century. So sort of 98, 99. And we started having clients coming to us saying, I want one of these newfangled websites that I've heard about on the World Wide Web. So, <laughs> so as an ad agency, we're like, oh, we best, we best start offering this as a service. And, and look, be it, I, I was sort of tasked with sort of being the, the account handling side of heading up that you know, what you now call a digital division. But at the time, I think we were just making it up. Um, and after six, six and a half years at the ad agency, um, you know, when you're in, when you're in a, uh, a service environment like an ad agency, you, you know, you put ideas in front of clients and you go, well, can you either have this one, this one, or this one, which one do you want? And yeah, you know, from a, an account handler's point of view, it doesn't make any difference to my job, which, which ad you go with. So I'd actually got to the point where I thought, I want to be the decision maker. Yes. I want to go client side. Yeah. Um, so, and this this new internet thing looks like it might have a future. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little, just, just a little. A little few, it might have it might have a future. So, I tell you what, I'd like to go client side on something internet based, but unsure as to whether the internet might have a future. I thought I'll, I'll try and go with a, a sort of a big safe company. So, I ended up at William Hill, the bookies, because right. their head office was in Leeds, and I was recruited to launch their first ever online casino oh wow so that is the precursor to launching my own business oh so so you so you didn't do much then just a little no 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 and and it's interesting actually because i now i now often i'll I'll go into schools and sixth forms and speak to them about careers and and things like that and i'll and i'll explain that story to them and say look and you remember when you're at school and the teachers used to say to you you know what do you want to do and having having done that sort of career path, I say, you know, I say to these kids, and I don't, I don't know if the teachers are happy with me saying it, but it, you know, what you do next year, the year after, when you're 18, 19, 20, whatever it might be, that that will happen, probably will have no bearing on what you end up doing. Yeah. And you know, I'm sort of I'm proof of that because I didn't launch my business till I was 32. Right. Right. And do you know what? It's funny that you say that because. Yeah, when I was younger, I had no idea what I wanted to be either when I was older. And yeah. everyone around you thinks, okay, that's strange. Like, you need to get your shit together if you don't know what you want to be when you're older, you know? And in fact, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing that's wrong crazy. with it. We're all put on this journey to figure out what our passion is. And therefore, you got to go on that journey to figure that out. And so and all, and, and all, I was going to say, and all those things I learned over that journey, you know, for each of those different jobs that I did, I picked something up that then rolled into what I eventually did. Right. Yeah. So there were all skills that were leading up to building your own business. Correct. Right? Awesome. Now, Phil, I heard a little bird told me that you have this uncanny ability to help business owners to not be lonely at the top. Like, you've got to tell us a little bit more about that. Okay, so uh, let's let's jump all the way forward, post sale of my business, and um, you know, and it's great. It's interesting actually. You know, you read all these business books and you listen to podcasts and stories and everything, and they tell you all this. You've got to grow a business, and you know, the end game is to sell. And actually, what they don't do is they don't do the next chapter, which is, what do you do after that? Right. Yeah. So, what do you do after? What that? do you do after that? Yeah, absolutely. So, what you know, once I bought the yacht and the island, and you know. <laughs> All that sort of thing. Um, so, so I, you know, I'd sold and, and, you know, was sort of kicking around deciding what to do. And, and what happened was a number of friends and, and contacts that I've got who have businesses came to me just to bounce things around with, you know, I've got this issue, I've got this problem, I'm thinking of selling, what does selling look like? Um, so I was just sort of giving giving out my 10 pennies. And then it was actually, and um, so this is going back to the start of lockdown. I was still still pondering what I wanted. To, you know, what do you want to do with your? You know, what do you want to do when you grow up? Um, <laughs> um, and thought, well, actually, you know, people seem to be getting be- a benefit from this advice I'm giving them. Right. Um, and I'm enjoying. That. I love talking to people about their businesses. Um, and so I thought, actually, I'm, I'm going to try and do this as as a as a proper job, as a you know, a sort of sell the service. Right. Um, and it all comes back to. The business journey I've been on that you know when you do run your own business 
and the cliche is absolutely right. It's lowly at the top. You, you know, it's fantastic running your own business. You know, there's loads and loads of plus points, but you have to make the call. Uh, uh, you know, whether it be strategic, whether it be recruitment, whether it be marketing, whatever it might be. And a lot of the time, it's I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I'm making this up as I go along. And I felt that a lot during my career. So so my service is to is to is to be there next to the business owner. So the business owner can say, Phil, I've got this issue. Can we just talk about it? Now, that issue might be a, might be a positive. It might be a negative. It might be a huge opportunity. Um, it might be something like, and I've had this with clients who said, well, I've got three fantastic ideas as to which way to go. Can I just chuck them around with you and, 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 and sort of decide, trying to sort out myself which way to go? Right. And often... You know, you have things sort of spinning around in your head and it, and it doesn't become real until you vocalize it. It sort of, as you're saying it, it sort of grows into, into something real. Yeah. Um, and often clients will sit with me and go, just listen. And, you know, and they'll talk through it. And as they're talking through it, they'll go, no, that's crap, isn't it? And then go sort of go down another line. And go, well, actually, that's quite good. <laughs> and all I'm doing is sort of prodding and poking. I'm just going, right. have, you th- have you thought about that? Why? And the, the classic business question, why did you do it like that? Well, we've always done it like that, or we did it like that in my old business. And, and somebody looking from the outside in yeah. can, can look at it and go, that's daft. You know, why are you doing it that way? Why do you do it this way? Or, or we had that situation and this is how it played out with us. Mm-hmm. So all of, those, all of those issues you have as a business owner that are rolling around in your head and you, you know, perhaps you might, you might speak to your wife or your husband or you might speak to a business friend, you know, a friend who's got business about it. Right. Until you've actually got somebody who, and it's important, this is who is totally independent, mm. who doesn't have doesn't have a dog in the race. So, and a, a, I've got a friend who's also a, a business coach, and he uses the phrase, you know, somebody has to tell you your baby is ugly. Right. You know, yeah. somebody has to say that's a shit idea, or or <laughs> you know, take it to the nth degree your business isn't going anywhere. It's going down the pan. Stop now. Now, you know, your wife or your husband isn't going to say that because they're going to go, oh, shit, what are we going to do? Your sales manager isn't going to say that. Your friend who's also got a business, yeah, they might advise you and help you, but I don't think they're going to go, do you know what, Kay? Your business is shit. Shut it down and go and get a job. You know, they're not going to say that. Somebody totally independent, as I say, a business sounding board like me, can do that because. I haven't, I'm, I'm totally independent. And you know what? I totally understand that because I have a mentor and I do exactly that. And it's funny because when I first got the mentor and I was like, yeah, I've got all these ideas. And I'm like, tell him all these ideas. And he goes, but what about X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, oh, I haven't thought about that. And Correct. I'm like, okay, next idea. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to happen. And we're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, have you thought about this? You know? And I'm like, and it got me so frustrated though, because I was like, one of these days you're gonna love my idea. <laughs> <laughs> one of they're all days. they're all brilliant ideas until you tell somebody about them. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I've had I've had them. Don't worry, I've had them. But no, but the thing is, it gets you thinking and it helps you with the next idea. You're right. Because you didn't think about what the X, Y, and Z was at this point, but now you're gonna think about it at the next point. So they just get better and better. And then it took about a year right that he find my mentor finally loved my ideas right we got them rolling and I'm like thank god for that but it took all these different perspectives from my mentor before it, I came down to a really good idea that's actually going to work yeah. right so we totally need you know a sounding board just like yourself definitely so I want to touch up on just going back a little bit um you mentioned that you created the business accidentally at a kitchen table. Like, tell us a little bit about that. How did that happen? Okay, so let's let's go back to William Hill. So, so as I said, I was I was tasked with launching their online casino, the first ever online casino that they had. Yeah. Um, and while I was there, we came across the concept of online bingo. Okay. So I did a presentation to the board as to you know what the market looked like whether we should do it all that sort of stuff they decided at the time not to do it um and the end of the year that i'd been at william hill i left i went off and did some consultancy work and sort of long story short i 
somebody was talking to me and said, oh, I want to get to this online gaming space. And I said, you want to get to online bingo? That's going to be the next big thing. And then sort of 24 hours later, I thought, hang on a minute. If I'm telling somebody else to get into it, why don't, why don't I do it? <laughs> right. So what I did was I sort of dusted down this William Hill report that I'd done, sort of changed it around a bit, put some more figures into it and, and took it out to the market for angel investment for what would have been the UK's first ever online pay to play online bingo site. Right. Okay. Um, this, this is proper dragon's den in the real world type stuff. Right. You know, um, that failed completely, totally right. for, for various reasons, for various reasons. Um, it was, it was right in the middle of the dot-com bubble bursting. Um, it was legally gray. So people weren't exactly sure whether we, you know, whether it was right or not. Right. Um, it was only in the U S so the, the key question, the first question I was asked, well, if this is going to be so brilliant, why aren't Mecca and Gala doing it? Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and the answer is as in many, many sectors, you know, these big, huge companies are so big, they're doing the, the big stuff. Why would they mess around with something tiddly and new on the market? They're, you know, it's almost like the, 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 you know, the elephant that doesn't see the mouse sort of thing. Um, but what had happened was I built a very, very simple website that listed all the, um, at the time, only US bingo sites um, that were in the market. And on it, I put a very simple pop-up questionnaire to get some uh, player data so that I could use the data in my presentation. So I sounded like I knew what I was talking about. So I, <laughs> you know, age, sex, demographics, spend right. patterns, frequency, recency, all that sort of stuff. So I sounded like I knew what I was doing. What happened was um, a number of the US bingo sites that were listed on my website contacted me and said, can we advertise on your website? Ah. So I said, and bearing in mind my, my history was selling advertising. Right. And I said, yeah, you know, send me some money and I'll work out how to put a banner ad on a, on a page. And that became the business. Oh, I see. So our website, which was, as I say, an adjunct to this presentation that I'd done, yeah, more. We were fortunate; we were in the right place at the right time. The business, the, the market, hugely grew, and obviously we were there, and more and more people were advertising on our website. Right. So, myself and my wife at home, kitchen table. Okay, let's sort of see if we can make this work. And I was still doing a bit of consultancy work at the time, and and also. I was looking for, a, I was still looking for a proper job. And I actually ended up, I got a job offer, very nice digital agency, very nice job, you know, salary car, the whole, the whole works. Right. I went in to see them on the Friday before the Monday I was due to start and said, I can't take this job. I have this thing that is starting to happen. Yeah. I'm going to give it a go. Right. I mean, a real, real sliding doors moment, you know. Because I could have quite easily taken that. It was a very nice job. I could take that job, part this thing that was happening, and, and it might never have happened. That's right. Oh, my goodness. See, now, there's a lot of people that would probably have taken that job. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so just digging a little bit deeper on that, why did you choose not to take that job and see where this business took you? That's a brilliant question. Nobody's ever asked me that. I have no, I, I remember, I remember actually coming out of the meeting, having told them I don't want, you know, I don't want the job and rang my mum and said, you know, that, you know, that job I told you I got, you know, I've decided not to take it. And she was like, you know how mums are like, oh, okay, darling. And I could hear her voice like, oh my God, what have you done? I've been there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I had two young kids at the time. You know, what the hell are you talking about? I think it was, I think, I think looking back, there were a couple of things. One was obviously it was new and exciting and it was happening. So I thought, all right, let's roll with it. And I think there was something in the back of my mind, which was, do you know what? If it doesn't work, I, I'll back myself to get another job a bit further down the line. Right. You know, if, give it some, and I, I don't think I sort of proactively thought this, but I think subconsciously it was like, you know, let's give it six months. And if it doesn't work, I'll go and get another job. Right. So there was that sort of safety net. And I think that in, in, a, in a lot of situations, when you think about it, and, and it's something I talk about a lot now is, is, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Exactly. All right. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, financially, there's, there's lots of really, really terrible things that happen, but, you know, within reason, okay, you know, we get to the point where I think, right, you know, I've got to get a job. Yeah, definitely. Like you've got to give 
things a go right without knowing or trying it out you're never really going to know what you're capable of right yeah, yeah, or what yeah. you transpire from it you, you just never know you have to give it a go that's what i believe anyway um uh you know and that's the thing if it doesn't work out then you can go find a job well, you know we can figure it out mm-hmm. we have those choices we at the end of the day you do have those choices and you can make those choices it's not end and beyond you know it, it's not over kind of thing and so yeah definitely i love that and so tell me this phil what actually qualifies you as an expert like did you have to go and get qualifications to do this like what qualifies you um, I think what qualifies me as if we talk about being a business sounding board is been there, done that and got the battle scars. You know, I've I've done the, you know, waking up at three o'clock at night going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, how am I going to sort this problem out? Oh, wow. You know, I've I've done the, you know, the working at weekends, the working at night, um, you know, going back to when we first started, when we did take holidays, if they were abroad, the first thing I had to do was check whether they had an internet cafe, because I'd obviously have to continue yeah. working so I think you know there are lots and lots of business coaches out there and you know some of them will will just buy a franchise no names uh some of them will read a couple of books and claim to be a business coach um but I I position myself as simply somebody who's slightly further down the the, the business road and the business journey than my clients and it, it really is been there done that got the t-shirt I you know in most instances the you know the situations we're discussing i might not have had exactly the same situation but i've been somewhere similar right you've got and real life experience in this absolutely and I, I it's very very hard sometimes to think well how can you coach somebody unless you've been there and done it exactly yeah definitely i mean is that going back to you know when you're in college and um uni and you're getting taught business but these teachers are professional teachers not business owners yeah right? yep. that doesn't make sense I mean at the time you don't think about it but when people when someone explains it to you well you got taught business by a teacher not someone that has built a business or anything about a business and you're like oh yeah right yeah. Yeah. and so yeah getting getting taught and being mentored and coached by someone like you that's been there done it, and got the t-shirt for it like you said yeah it makes a dramatic change in your own business definitely so i would love it at this point phil if you could teach a principle to our audience that they can relate to and immediately apply in their business okay let me give you a really really quick uh exercise okay Okay. this really really quick Uh, and this is is sort of an example of how i work with my clients okay but i'm going to run through it really really quickly and if you go to my website there's a bit more about it so this is i call this the pitter patter Okay, the pitta being P I T A, pain in the ass. Okay, so and you and and anybody who's listening, get a pen and paper, and you have to do this really, really quickly. So number one, write down the biggest pain in the ass in your business at the moment. Okay, okay. so okay, you don't have to do it now, but do it in your mind. Okay, yeah, what's exactly. the really? You've got one, yeah. You already yeah. got one. Yep. Okay, so you now write down three possible solutions to that problem. Okay. Okay. So there might be three completely different solutions. Okay. For each solution, I then want you to, I know this is why you have to write it down because you'll get stuck in your brain doing this. Three pros for why that's a good idea. Okay. Okay. So it might be, it's quick, it's cheap, it's, we've done it before, whatever it might be. So three pros for each of those solutions. Right. Okay. And then three cons for each of those solutions. Why are they a bad idea? Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's going to take too long. It's too expensive. We've done it before and didn't work. Whatever they might be. Right. So you've now got you've got your you've got your real pain in the ass problem. Yeah. You've got three possible solutions. Yeah. You've got three pros for each solution. You've got three cons for each solution. Mm-hmm. You can now look at that piece of paper and go right. Okay. Which one are we going to go with? Let's do it. Okay. And solve our problem. You know what? And you you just made that sound so simple right there you go. That are probably like oh my goodness i've got these problems and i don't know how to find a solution you just made it completely simple right pen and paper let's figure out possible solutions and let's do the pros and cons simple yep. as that i love it so simple um so it'll be great to hear a few of your success stories that you've had recently just to kind of share with the audience 
Okay. Um, I think, uh, uh, and just going back to what I do, um, you know, when you set up a business, there's, there's certain things you do. You know, I'll, I'll get an accountant, I'll get a lawyer if I need a lawyer, bookkeeper, whatever it might be. Yeah. People don't think about getting a, a coach or, a, or a, a mentor or a sounding board. So it's, it's really hard for them to understand, A, why I need one, B, what the benefits are. But my last client, my most recent client, he sent me a testimonial. And he said that some of the last line of testimony was something like, you allowed me to fall back in love with my business. Aww. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, tr- yeah. it's go- it goes back to the lonely at the top. And he got to the point where it was just like, oh, God, there's so much shit going around in my head. I could hate this business. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't be like that with your own business. You should love it. You should, you know, yeah. and people say, if you do, you know, if you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Um, so I'm there to relieve that pain that tension all those stresses um of clients just to be able to say can i just talk to somebody about this and you know uh, as people say in 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 life you know talking about things make them a lot easier um but sometimes it's it's clarity so sometimes it's um you know i've got this problem let's work it out other times it's and i've had you know i've had clients who've got Big businesses, in fact, bigger than bigger than my business would ever was, and said, "Phil, am I okay to do this? Right. Whatever this task is, and it's just a bit of validation or authority." Um, I also work with, uh, you know, sometimes I work with clients as an accountability partner, and right. again, the beauty, one of the beauties of running your own business is you get to choose what you do. Yeah. The downside is you've got nobody saying, "Okay, did you, you know, did you do X, Y, and Z?" Yeah. So, you know, if I'm there and go, look, okay, we had a meeting last week and you said you were going to do this, this and this. And you'll more likely do it if you've got somebody doing that rather than, I mean, I, I use the example, you know, as business owners, we, because we can pick and choose what we do, you end up sort of pushing the cold piece of broccoli around your plate. Right. You know, you, you know, you should eat it. You know, it's good for you, but you really just don't want to do it. <laughs> so unless, unless your mom's there saying, eat your broccoli. <laughs> I totally do that. I totally do that. I and that's you. like, it's like that in business. And as business owners, we end up doing yeah. the things we like doing or we want to do. And sometimes we don't end up doing the things we should be doing. Yes. Um, and then the, and the other side of it as well is um, a, a lot of it is this looking from the outside in. Mm-hmm. And a lot of business owners, as you grow your business, you sort of slice bits of you off and different people get different jobs and all that sort of thing. Right. And you end up with your stuff. And sometimes the stuff you end up with is stuff you shouldn't be doing. Yes. But actually, you quite like doing it, so you carry on doing it. <laughs> um, and unless somebody comes in and goes, okay, why are you still doing that? You know, why haven't you got a bookkeeper or a freelance web designer? Or, and I was talking to somebody on a podcast yesterday, and she was talking about editing her own podcasts and i said why don't you get an editor in yes oh and it, yeah because then when you've got the yeah you know, your skill is being you know the host and you know all of that sort of stuff not the editor That's so actually you can go out you can go out and interview lots more people and do lots more podcasts and give the editing to somebody else not you wasting your time doing something you is not your skill set and you shouldn't be doing but um, until somebody says that to you you end up doing it yeah, that's so true. And that's so funny because um, I told you from the very beginning, I've outsourced my editing. I don't do none of that, none of the show notes. I have someone else that does it for me. Um, and in fact, I built my own team and I actually have my own editing um, podcast services now, which is fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, totally. If it's not your skill, you don't need to learn how to do it. Just get yep. someone else to do it. It just, it, you get back more time for yourself to do what you need to do definitely so at this point I know Phil that people are thinking oh my goodness how do I get hold of Phil I need him as my sounding board so where can people find you and do you have any additional free support that maybe they can download okay so the best place to find me is my website which is www.philfraser.co.uk don't go to philfraser.com because that's a medieval reenactment costume company. So if you get to a website with lots of bows and arrows and looks like Robin Hood and all that sort of thing, that's not me. That's not me. So it's .co.uk. Um, there's, uh, there's a big blog section on there, which I call Nouser Fraser. Okay. Do you like that? Nouser Fraser? I do like that. Um, and all my podcast interviews and stuff like that. And, and things like the Pitter Patter is on there. Um, I have a five-step a uh, strategic tool that I built called the called the FFS. Okay. 
doesn't stand for FFS, it stands for Fraser Five Step, not anything else you might think FFS stands for. <laughs> and uh, I've got a newsletter that comes out on a sort of irregular basis, which has lots of great stuff in there. And anybody wants to connect with me, I'm on LinkedIn. Just search me on LinkedIn, I'm on there most days. Um, and yeah, happy to talk to or support anybody who's got any issues in business. Amazing. And guys, remember all the links, everything that Phil has just mentioned, there will be in the show notes below. So make sure you scroll down. Phil, it was amazing to have you on here. Um, thanks for coming on board. So many golden nuggets. Um, I love the sounding board and the, the service and everything that you provide to people. Amazing. Um, thanks again for coming on to the show. Pleasure. Thanks for having me, Kate. Thank you for your time and listening to Uncensored Society podcast. All resources mentioned throughout the episode will be added to the show notes and you'll be able to find them at the bottom as you scroll down. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and leave a review in iTunes. Thank you once again.